everybody. This is Early Riser 71 coming to you on the 25th of November at 0930 in the morning. I got little ER behind the camera. Um, should have been doing this a long time ago. I finally got him out of the house <laughs> to come film me, so here we are. So the whole point of this gear review today is to take what I know now, what I learned off the through hike last year, and imagine that I'm going to launch at Springer again this February, um, like a lot of you are going to and then go through exactly what I would carry this time. I watched my gear hike review from last year this morning and man, did I take a bunch of extra crap that I didn't need. So the whole goal of this is hopefully um, to prevent you from carrying some unnecessary stuff, but I also wanna just say, hey, you gotta have your own experience. Don't worry about it too much. Don't lose sleep over what you're carrying. Just be mature enough as you start moving along to get rid of things when you don't need it. Uh, and that's the whole magic of the trail. All right, so we're going to start with the big three right down here. Um, some new pieces of equipment that I've acquired since the through hike. This just came in yesterday. This is my new Z-Pax Arc Hall. This thing holds 40 pounds. Most of you have seen this before. Um, I haven't used it yet, but my God, is this thing light? And I'm excited about it. Some cool features that I had added to this that come at an extra cost but are worth it. Got the two hip pouches. I got oh, one pocket on the front, and then one thing that I like on this, when you roll down your roll enclosure, instead of having to fold it over and trap water and clasp it up to top, I got the side clasped on it there. So once you roll it up, you can collapse it down and help shed that water off. So that is my new get up right there, Z-Pax Arc Hall. I will always be using a pack liner, especially for things like my sleep system. Um, and what you won't notice here is a lot of stuff sacks that I had in my first review. Definitely not a stuff sack guy anymore, and I learned quickly that, man, you just need to jam this stuff down in your backpack and, uh, and get moving down the trail. And a lot of stuff sacks, putting, trying to make everything so neat and nice, creates a lot of dead volume and dead space inside your backpack. And uh, it robs you of space overall. So lessons learned. I'm always going to use a pack liner. Great thing about the Z Pack, though, highly water resistant. Moving on to the tent, still got my duplex Z Packs. Um, this thing could last another through hike or two. This thing has is amazing. Everybody that watches me knows um, how much I think about this tent, and uh, this would be my pick right now. And I would argue. If I could save money everywhere else on all this equipment, I would just to buy this tent. That's how good that piece of kit is. All right, sleep mat. Oh, one last thing for my Z-Pax ruck. I also have a Z-Pax pack liner. This thing weighs nothing. I think it's like two ounces or something. I would carry this over the Osprey one that I had last time. So new piece of kit. Do I need it necessarily with all this? Probably not. So now that I have the new Z-Pax backpack, I think I may do away with this. We'll see. I have upgraded and I finally went with everybody else to the Neo Air x Lite. This is the regular size. Um, it is supposedly made out of new material this year that isn't as noisy. Uh, but I'll tell you, I camp by myself most nights, so I'm not really worried about the noise per se. And this thing just has great reviews. It's made out of 30D material. Um, everybody that was following me knows that I switched to the uh, Nemo sleep mat and it was only made out of 20D material. So in the end, that's probably why I got a hole because it just couldn't stand to the rigors of the trail. This one has made many a through hikes with a lot of hikers and that's why I chose to go with it. Got it at a good price. Um, other things for my ground pad, I just put this here. This is my sill poncho that I used all, all the way through. Not sure I would take this again. The tent doesn't really need it, even though I like to be a little bit cleaner in the morning when I pack myself up. I don't want to put a muddy tent back inside. Um, putting this, putting something like this back inside this little bag and contain the mud inside there to me is much more digestible. Um, however, uh, using a ground pad, I probably always will. So whether that's to go out and buy a piece of um, that construction material, poly cloth or whatever, um, I might look into that. Either way, I will have some kind of lightweight ground pad. Moving over to the sleep system. All right, so I'm still going with the enlightened equipment. This Revelation, this is the uh, Revelation quilt. 
900 down tech, 20 degree bag. The length is, I got it in long and I got it in wide. This comes in at 20.55 ounces and it is an amazing piece of equipment. It collapses down to almost nothing. Warm as all get out. Warm as all get out. And uh, I wouldn't trade this for anything. That piece of kit. And I will tell you, you can smell it, you can look at it. It looks like I never used it. Um, it's clean, and here's the reason. And the thing I would still take is my Cool Max liner. Um, I climbed in this every night. This would be aggravating for some, but for me, keeping that quilt clean every night, um, it adds a, another layer of trapped air in there to help you keep a little bit warmer. And in the summer months, um, when you're sticky and you're climbing in that, that quilt and laying on your sleeping pad, this thing right here is fabulous. And when you get into town, the only thing that's dirty is this. I threw this in with my laundry, comes back out, my whole seat, sleep system is reset and clean again. So amazing. So that's the big three. Um, the things I've changed, again, got the z Pax Ruck and went with the Neo Air x Lite. All right, moving on over. Z-Seat, wouldn't change it for the world. I made my own, if y'all remember, but this thing's invaluable on the trail. It's all weird shape right now. I walked by a tree one day and it just sheared off part of the mat. I don't know what the hell is up with that. That's what the whites are about right there, though. They will just rip your gear apart if you're not careful. Um, but I would take that same one. We'll go with uh, trekking poles. See, I haven't even opened these yet. Get them unhooked. These are the Lecky, let me see. Lecky Cork Light DSS Anti Shock. And the reason why I went with these, A, my other poles were bent. Um, they made it through the through hike. Uh, not the whole way, obviously. Y'all know I went through about three sets of poles. But the problem with those were at the bottom, they had the screw adjustment for the anti shock method. And I found that I had this weird thing to where when I'm walking, my right wrist, I would twist it a little bit as I put that pole in the ground and it would eventually come unscrewed. <clears throat> and so as I'm going up a steep mountain in the whites or something, that pole would collapse right when I needed it the most. Uh, so in the end, I like this better because this has the quick releases at both points and not the screw system. So try those out. I'm a big fan of Lecky. They have the best customer service and the best warranty in the business. I would argue that hands down. Trial. Got the same one. It's a lightweight. Don't even know what kind. Let me see. Oh, it's a GSI trial. Same one I used. You have to have a trial. Don't go in there thinking that you don't. Take the two ounces and it will save you some uh, pain and it will create a nicer environment for the rest of the hikers. Water. This is where I save a lot of weight. If you watch my video from last year, you'll know that I carried a lot of extra accoutrement um, with <clears throat> my water system. This is what I'm carrying this time. Imagine there's two smart water bottles here, a 750 and a liter water bottle. Those are the two sizes I would carry. I'm carrying my Evernew bag. This thing is the one that made it all the way through my through hike. It can make another one. Um, that is a, an incredible piece of kit. Aquamira, I'm now a huge fan and I will use it all the way through. I understand a little bit better now with experience of which ones that I really need to treat and which ones I can probably go uh, most of your streams in Georgia, North Carolina, Tennessee are coming right off the top of a mountain. So um, just keep that in mind. I'm not saying take chances and risk it, but I'm telling you I would take more chances. I don't even think it's taking a chance. I would drink more clean water without putting chemicals or filtering it um, as I go through the southern regions. Sawyer, the regular size filter. This is the one I had on the trail the whole time. I don't even think I ever replaced it. I will replace it before I go back out. Water flow rate on this one is amazing. Don't kid yourself, don't get the mini. Don't even know why they make the mini. Probably because people keep buying it for some weird reason. Um, use the big one. It's not much of a weight penalty. This thing right here is money. And this is the Tornado tube. What this thing will allow you to do, and this is the only extra piece of kit I'm gonna take for my water filter. It will allow you to screw on your filter to a water bottle on the other side and your bag goes up here, and then it's got like a gravity system if you want it to be that. Me, using Aquamara, I really don't need a gravity system much, so that right there is all the water kit I'm taking. Cook kit, saving a lot of weight here too. This is an MSR stove that I have. I would probably go to the new Whisper Light, by the way. They just came out with a new one, so 
This one's a little bit heavy. I know the Whisper Light, the newer model's a lot lighter, but this is just to represent I am taking a stove. I said the whole time that I wouldn't need one, but uh, or I was going to try to go away from it and use alcohol. Heck with all that, man. I'm going to stay with a canister. And the only cook pot I'm taking is this titanium. I can't even remember what kind. Everything's all wrapped up because I've got it in my little uh, foil cover and this is the this is the cook pot that made it the entire Appalachian Trail cooking on it every day usually two times a day I drink all my coffee out of here eat my ramen out of here just use a paper towel to clean it up every night um, love it don't need anything else from the way or for the way I cook uh, wouldn't change it so that is my entire cook system right there oh and then I still got my sorry my same fork and spoon combo I used the whole time this is a human gear product got it on Amazon and it just makes a long fork or spoon and it collapses down, it weighs nothing, it's plastic. Love it. All right, y'all, this is my clothing Z-Packs bag. I don't remember what it's called, but it's the kind that has the felt on the inside. I keep all my clothes in here in the daytime. When I get into my tent at night, I turn it inside out, put what clothes I don't have back on back inside of it, and that's my pillow. And I love this freaking thing. No more blow up pillows for this guy. This thing was just awesome. Um, a little bit extra weight, but man, the, the sleep I was getting afterwards is well worth it. All right, talking about micro spikes. These are the Yak Track Pro. Um, let me see. These are the Yak Track Pro Traction, and I will tell you, they don't get great reviews. I bought these before I found the other ones that I ended up wearing, which were the uh, Stable Ice. Um, the orange ones that I had in the whites. I would go with the Stable Ice again. I put that link in my day 15 director's cut. So go to there, go down into the comments and you'll see that I pinned that link to the top comment. I would buy those 100 times before I'd buy anything else. But these right here are very lightweight. They wouldn't be a bad design or something to use like in the Smokies when you're walking on icy rocks. They're just noted in the comments. They're not real durable, so keep that in mind. I go with my fanny pack again, same one I had, same one I bought in Damascus, lasted me the rest of the trail, and it, it looks brand new almost. So I'm definitely a guy who likes stuff that I can reach in real quick on my waist. And I've also probably, for my little pocket on my Z-Packs, I'd either have a water bottle in there or some snacks or my phone or something in there too. So a couple of options to carry snacks or whatnot, but I definitely like the fanny pack option. And this is my Z-Packs wallet that I carried. It's got two sides on there. My big Droid 2 fit in here, so I know um, any phone that I buy is probably going to fit inside there. And it's almost waterproof. It's very water resistant. Great to have to keep your stuff um, from getting wet, either from sweat or rain. Yes, I would take it again. This is the pole I used the whole time, my recovery stick. I would take it again. It's like 10 ounces. Um, probably the best piece of kit I had on the trail to get me through the trail. A lot of people, here's what I'll say about the recovery stick real quick, or recovering in general. If you don't do it as a practice before you get on the trail and make yourself, um, make yourself get into that habit, trying to start a new habit on the trail is probably not gonna work. So if you're, if you wanna use recovery techniques and you wanna use the benefits of those throughout your hike, you got to start the practice before you get out there or eventually you're just going to look at it and be like, man, that's a piece of kit I never use. Yep, you're probably not using it because it's just not a habit yet and it has to be a habit. And recovery is also one of those things that you don't notice the benefits um, because you don't know, that's the first time you've ever through hike, so you're not really sure how you're going to feel every day. What I will tell you is if you would use it for the first two or three weeks, four weeks, and then quit using it, I promise you'll notice a difference and it'll be a bad difference. That's just early riser's opinion. All right, y'all, the boy had to go take care of some personal business, so we'll continue on. So, food bag, I would still use the Z-Packs. Um, I love it, it's been great. Y'all know I made the modifications right here with the extra carabiner on one side just so I can take some of the pressure off the carabiner that comes with it. This bag has a hole through hike on it. Um, doesn't really have any visible holes. And y'all know me, I didn't hang it a lot. Um, the only thing that happens is this Velcro uh, gets really loose after a while. It really stops working, but you're gonna roll it down anyway, so it ain't that big of a deal. And then I got some 550 cord inside this little bag. 
So when it's time to hang my bag from a tree, I pull the cord out, I put some rocks in this bag, I tie this bag to the cord, um, chuck it over a tree limb, hook my bag to it, pull the bag up, good to go. Wouldn't change a thing. Yep, camp shoes. I'm a guy that's not gonna go away from camp shoes. I love the flexibility Crocs give you. Is it a weight penalty? Yep. Walking in town, when your feet are sore, these things right here feel like Christmas on your feet. Wouldn't change it for the world. I'm a Crocs guy. Shoes. These are the Ultra Lone Peak 3.0s with Ultra um, Gators. They custom fit. They clamp down on the back of the shoe via Velcro. Um, so not necessarily wanted to go away from the VASC constant velocities. I love them. These things were on sale. They got a wide toe box. My feet have splayed out since the start of the trail. I've got some some hikes or some long walks in these. Uh, they're zero drop shoes and really liking them so far. So gonna try them out. I can always go back to the VASC if I need to. Love the VASC as well though. All right, let's talk towels on the trail. This is the only towel. This is the towel I had. Whoops, there's two, but pretend like there's only one here. So basically this is just a, a washcloth. And this is the only towel I would take. People are like, ah, oh, but what if I come up to a shelter that has a shower and I need a towel? Man, <laughs> that is few and far between. And you can air dry or you can use one of your shirts to dry off and hang it out. Do not carry an extra towel with you. That's just early riser's opinion. Every hostel, every hotel has a towel. Um, those are one of those weird things that I couldn't get over at first and carried a towel with me. And you don't need the towel. Trust me. Things will take care of themselves. Gloves. These are the Z-Packs rain mitts. I like them somewhat. They're more of a better wind protection than rain protection. Your hands are going to get wet in there if it's a soaking rain. Um, if it's a cold soaking rain, that's where you run into headaches, right? But I got those. I've got a pair of wool liners that I carried. And then got a pair of black running gloves. So layered appropriately, these things um, in zero degrees, I was very warm still. Um, like I said in my previous director's cuts, though, you got to find a glove that you can operate your phone in. And once you start layering, layering your gloves, your phone's going to be harder to manipulate if you're using it to vlog your through hike. If you're not vlogging or have to pull out your phone, man, uh, it don't matter what gloves you wear. But for those vloggers, you got to think through your gloves. And those are the ones I would carry again right now. I'm always going to carry two bandanas from this point forward. One's going to be on my um, shoulder strap on my backpack to wipe my nose and my mouth with. And then one um, will be either in my pocket or in my backpack ready to switch out because these things get absolutely disgusting. Oh, for headgear, that's my Merino Bull wool buff. These are real thin, um, but I really love them. Uh, wouldn't change that for the world. That thing's going back out with me. Moving on. My North Face, just a watch cap type thing. Love that thing for camp. And you know what? I was just thinking this morning, I have a bunch of different headgear that I could take, but a balaclava starting off at first for some of the weather I hit in the Smokies and in the Cherokee National Forest, I think I would take this very lightweight balaclava. It's not windproof, um, but it would doggone be sure or sure be colder or warmer than what I had going through there when I was getting pelted with ice and sleet um, that was blowing sideways. So I think I would take this and then send it home later on. All right, that's it for the headgear I'd wear. Minus my early riser hat that I would wear. I don't know why I'd take this one again. I loved it. Um, might switch it out next time for Georgia Bulldog hat or something. We'll see. All right, next. Ex officio. These are the Amphi convertible pants. These are my favorite. You can get these on Amazon. Just look for ex officio. And the best thing about them, quick dry. They're loose enough where I can put my water bottle and whatnot in there if I need to to keep it warm um, to keep the ice from forming in there or warm up some food to eat on the trail when everything's frozen and they also have the bottom of them zip um, up as well so you can get them over your boots or shoes great pants love them performance underwear these are the ex officios these became my favorite on the trail and then I bought just another cheap pair at Walmart or something Ultimately, though, these ex officios were the best. 
I would still take again, these are my calf um, liners, uh, my compression calf sleeves, I should say. I love these things. These things keep your legs warm as well in those colder months. So they serve dual purpose. I never had any calf issues, as y'all remember, and uh, these things that were are, are invaluable starting off on the trail. Um, the benefits, I, I can't even, just just look it up, research it. The benefits of these far outweigh the ounces that they um, take to carry them. These are my compression booty socks. These would go again too for recovery inside the tent. Your feet are gonna swell every day. Um, they're gonna hurt every day. These compression socks get in there. They keep your feet from swelling too much. They keep fluid moving around and not pulling in your feet. Critical, love them. Warm gear, I would take my waffle shirt again. This is probably my favorite piece of warm gear. If you don't own a waffle shirt and you're gonna start out in February or March, I would say you are short a piece of gear that you need. Why is it called a waffle shirt? Because it's got all these little squares that trap air and just make it warm. This is a Patagonia version. Get you a waffle shirt if you're leaving in the early months. Critical. Those are three pairs of darn tufts. One to hike in, one spare, and then one that I always keep for camp. So I always know I'm gonna have something dry to put on my feet when I get to camp. Just a pair of shorts to wear, sleep in if needed, wear around town. And then two pairs of Capilene uh, Patagonia underwear. Long sleeve shirt, long pants. I'll normally sleep in the pants and the shirt if the shirt isn't nasty from wearing them. I won't ever hike in the pants unless I just absolutely have to. Two shirts, one would be on. That's the cool max that I was wearing towards the end. Love it, merino wool. And this is just a dual fold um, wicking shirt that I got at work. <clears throat> so that's pretty much the clothing items I would wear. This is a new Arteryx Serenium or something like that, hooded jacket. So if you remember the old black Arteryx that I wore didn't have a hood. <clears throat> um, man, I felt that was a shortfall of mine the whole trail. Never really talked about it much. Uh, but that, that hood right there gives you so many more warmth options. So yes, that weighs a little bit more now. I think it's 10 or 12 ounces. Um, packs down to nothing still, just like my other Arcteryx did. But I look so forward to having that hood, especially in those colder months, man, it would have helped so much. Because that's just a, a piece of headgear too. You can pull up when you need it and just pull it back down to cool off when, you, when the situation allows. All right, let me grab my notebook real quick, sorry. All right, so this is my OR Helium HD jacket. Um, love this thing. Bought this, obviously, since I returned from the trail. Much lighter than that silver Arcteryx I was wearing. Uh, packs down to almost nothing again. Has great reviews. And I will not own a rain jacket without pit zips, and this is the only model that had pit zips in the OR version. So love it, can't wait to use it. Um, critical for those winter months, especially, usually more for wind blocking than rain, but when it's raining, that thing will help as well. Rain pants, so here's your options in the winter. Carry a pair of rain pants, or you can go with a rain kilt, something like that. The rain kilt I would save for April and May probably. I would, I would have that sent to me and I'm going with rain pants at first. You just have to understand you're gonna be a little bit heavier in the winter, but if you get caught out there without the right pieces of kit, um, your life could be uh, in danger, and I, that's no joke. So keep that in mind. Um, rain pants, just for wind protection, everything else are great. Um, a lot of people don't wanna carry those because of the weight, and I would say in April, I would be in agreement with it, but in February and March on the Appalachian Trail, those rain pants will be in my backpack. All right, y'all, let's check the list real quick. Oh, I don't have it out here now, but I bought a Petzl Reactive Headlamp. That's one of those rechargeable ones. You know, it, it's nice on paper. I'm not sure I would carry it. I'd probably just go with my Petzl's that take three AAAs. Uh, but in the end, I kind of like it, so we would see. Um, I would also take some Dr. Bronner's soap, just a little bottle. That's critical, um, just to be able to if, if a hotel or a hostel or somewhere doesn't have soap, and that's very rare, or if you need to wash your hands on the trail, that's some biodegradable soap that won't kill the environment. Um, and then the last thing that I don't have out here to show you is 
uh, my sundry kit, which is just a toothbrush, floss, band-aids, a, a small little sewing kit, which mine consisted of two needles and some green thread, needle sporn, and fingernail clippers. Those things were always with me, always on the trail. Um, and I, I used the sewing kit a lot, especially for blisters. Um, so watch my videos if you hadn't seen that. And uh, we'll go over the, or it, it describes the technique I was using to uh, keep my blisters from filling back up with pus. Things that you don't see out here that were in my original video. The pump sack to blow up my Neo Air, gone. Um, the separate pillow, gone. Uh, the little blue cup that I used at first, that's gone. About three stuff sacks I had in the original video, gone. A towel, gone. The base for my fuel canister stove and some other items are gone out of my cook set. Windscreen's gone out of there. And that's about it. So I, I don't have a scale here that's worth weighing all this, but if I put all that in my backpack, I'm guessing my bait weight's around, base weight is around 16 to 18 pounds without food and water, obviously. And um, that to me, that's very acceptable for winter time. All right, y'all, I know this was long. Um, I hope this helps 2018 through hikers out in any way with the upcoming season. If you can't afford some of this gear, like believe me, man, just my sleep system alone, that's like a, that's like $1,100 right there. And that's the only reason, how do, how do you frame this right? Those are where, that's where your money goes, right? So all this other stuff, you can use cheap Walmart gear. I swear you can and get away with it. But those three items right there, your ruck, your tent, and your sleep system, man, you need to put some money into those because those, those are the things that you're going to be dealing with the most every day and it will save your life. And I, I just choose to Z-Packs, can't go wrong, and that Enlightened Equipment quilt, I would argue, is the best on the market. And if you're not a quilt person, look into it. If you're hell-bent on being a sleeping bag person, man, that's, it's going to work too. Uh, I would just argue you're carrying extra weight for no reason, and uh, you're going to get the same warmth value out of a good sleeping mat and a quilt. All right, y'all, enough rambling for this 25th of November. I hope this helped in some way. Um, I hope y'all have a great rest of your weekend. Later. All right, y'all, one more item I forgot to film when I had everything pulled out, but this is an important piece of kit because it's a, it's also a significant uh, weight penalty, but it's also critical, especially if you're doing video logs or vlogging on the trail. This was the 13,000 milliamp anchor battery charger that I used on the trail. Uh, for those who follow me, you know that I used a 21,000 milliamp too because I was trying to upload videos every day, trying to do that over a week um, uh, LTE signal at times, usually actually. Uh, so I carried two battery chargers at, a, at what I would consider a significant weight penalty, but it was worth it just to get the videos out. But this 13,000 milliamp right here will charge your phone about three or four times. Uh, should get you from town to town each time depending on how much you're using your phone if you're gonna vlog You're gonna have to get something bigger. I would suggest um, All right, just want to throw that in there